Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, which it will be Valentine's Day by the time this video actually comes out, I wanted to do another list of some of my favorite fictional characters. Do note that these are not in any particular order. First up on my list is James and Alyssa from The End of the Effing World. Specifically, I'm referencing the TV show because I've never read the comic book, though I know there are similarities between a comic book and the TV show. I also know there are differences. Um, James and Alyssa, I will recognize as kind of a weird pick. Um, the fact of the matter is they're an interesting couple because they came about because of different things. Obviously, like, you know, James started dating Alyssa because it's like, oh, she's kind of, she wants to date me just because, like, obviously Alyssa's got a complicated home life and she was trying to find an escape from it and so James kind of looked at her as like oh she could be my first human kill because he thought of himself as a psychopath because he'd killed animals and stuff like that obviously Alyssa never being the wiser to be fair Alyssa never found out that that's actually why James went along with all of this but what I like about their story is that even throughout like you know they they started off in this manner the fact of the matter is they grew into something they actually you know James eventually did come to care for her I mean he protected her from that um that uh the dude whose house they broke into in season one was an Clyde like he protected her from it and it was in that moment you know it's just they were very Bonnie and Clyde after that, like after she had left him because she just couldn't be around him after what he did, but like she came back and like I said, they were very Bonnie and Clyde. That's just talking about season one. Then they had their whole complicated thing in season two because, you know, her and James never saw each other. And now it's, it's a whole thing because I don't want to spoil it in case no one's ever seen it. But the fact of the matter is... There, like I said, there's a beautiful nature to it. I mean, and it, it fits the, the tone of the show, too, of, like, it being, you know, this dark kind of fucked up romance. But there's uh, there's a beauty in their, like, them finding each other and f kind of finding themselves with each other. And I don't know. It, 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 it gels together so well. So I think they make such a very interesting couple. So that's why they're on my list. Number two on the list is Sora and Kyrie from Kingdom, the Kingdom Hearts series. Um, it's interesting to say Sora and Kyrie because they're never officially a couple. The fact of the matter is Kyrie often gets referred to as a person that's like the most important to Sora, but that's kind of it. Because I do know people ship Sora and Riku together as well, but obviously there's, there's you can de definitely tell just the way like Sora will, you know, goes through so much for Kyrie and even vice versa. She'll She'll go through a lot, you know, to, you know, to help him in any shape or form. I mean, look at what she was able to do for him in Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, she was able to kind of, you know, because she's always been his guiding light, you know, and they've always been there for each other. Obviously, they had moments of holding hands, held, spoilers for Kingdom Hearts 3, they shared a Papu fruit. Like, that, not one well, I share one, they both had one, but, like, the fact of the matter is the significance of that being, like, that coming full circle, that being a Kingdom Hearts 1 thing, that never happened, but, you know, I mean, obviously the drawings kind of reference that, but still. So the fact of the matter is they're so, like, deeply connected, and like I said, they're never officially, like, labeled as a couple, but they are, like, you know, always finding their way back to each other despite whatever circumstances might pull them apart. It's, it's, it's such a, you know, beautiful, you know, bond that they have that you're always kind of like, you, 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 you definitely, I, you know, especially because it's, you know, in the vein of uh, Final Fantasy anyway, I very much see a, you know, Titus and Yuna, like, reflection in their relationship, you know, so. Next up on the list is Capel and Aya from a video game called Infinite Undiscovery. I don't know how many people are aware of this game, uh, but Capel and Aya make a very interesting couple because it has got, she's, I, I think Aya definitely falls in that category of kind of being a, a Sundari to a certain extent. Because uh, the fact of the matter is her and Capel don't really get along. Because obviously when she looks at Capel, she's like, you look like Sigmund. But the fact of the matter is you're kind of a coward. You really don't really want to fight. But to be fair, like, you know, because Capel, I think it was like after you uh, take all those unblessed back to their village and you're on your way back to meet up with the group in Fael, I had asked him, like, why did Capel come along? And Capel was like, well, you, you said for your sake. And she's like, what? He's like, yeah, you said come along please for my sake and because of that Capel went along because obviously Capel's not really the one that he avoids danger like I said but um you know for, you know I think that speaks volumes that the fact of the matter is he would go that far for her you know and the fact of the matter like I said they're very like they're like, like I said they're very opposite spectrums because he's very like he can be very meekish and she can be very like she's very strong will I would even go as far as saying borderline stubborn but the fact of the matter is 
they care about. They downright love each other, and it and it's nice to see that kind of like progress as a story because because Aya is one of the many people that kind of got compelled to kind of be become the hero that he becomes in the game. And you know that moment at the end. I, I don't want to spoil things, but that moment at the end, what Edward has to do, what he has to do, and you know, it's like you know, for Capel, it's like he's he's found friends um, that he never thought he'd find, and the fact is, he found someone who loves him that he loves in return, and it was just he he was grateful for all his experiences. Lady, it's such a powerful moment at that end in the end of the game. Not, well, there's the end in, but obviously, like, after the boss fight, everything that goes down, like I said, I don't want to spoil it. I really enjoy the game, and I thought that's obviously one of my favorite relationships to come out of that storyline, too. So, I, I don't know. that That's why they, they've made their way on my list. And then, finally, on this list is Peter and MJ, you know, uh, Spider-Man and MJ. Obviously, they've been one of those superhero care like couples that's always kind of resonated in my mind. Uh, just get, I've grown up with this particular coupling. That's why like I am I'm kind of more Peter and MJ more than Peter and Gwen Just because I grew up with MJ and Peter because most iterations of animate animated series I've seen as Spider-Man most movies end up using um, the whole MJ and Peter relationship rather than others You know, you know, I mean don't get me wrong Gwen Stacy has popped up But it's always been mainly like a Peter and MJ situation and then you know, that's kind of the power couple I've come to know. Obviously a lot of the nature of their relationship has stayed the same, but obviously, you know, it changes by different, you know, um, adaptations. Obviously one that kind of sticks, you know, sticks in my mind is all complicated relationship they have in the uh, Marvel uh, PS4 Spider-Man game, where it's like they're, by that time, like they've already been together and they've actually broken up. Uh, just because like, obviously she feels like she doesn't want to be like that damsel in distress. She wants to prove like, you, you, you might have the superpowers in a relationship, but the fact of the matter is I can, you know, I can stand on my own. I can do stuff too. I don't just need you to kind of rescue me all the time. Like this isn't just like a one-sided relationship. We're partners in this. I, I thought that was kind of the whole point. I mean, the fact is they did break up, but then the fact of the matter is they did find their way back to each other, you know, kind of like complimenting each other very nicely. Obviously, like the Felicia situation kind of added some hiccups to that a little bit, but still, it's very nice that they ended up, you know, having each other and, and finding their way back to each other in that regard. But obviously one that also sticks out in my mind is the whole uh, Peter and MJ situation in uh, the MCU. Obviously, we've seen that relationship grow. You could definitely tell that there were hints in Homecoming of like her potentially m might having feelings for him because it just seemed interesting because a lot of times it almost seemed like she kind of like was always around him in any shape or form because she had this very like, you know, because of her very like dry and sar sarcastic demeanor and everything, you know, kind of hiding what was kind of underneath and everything and obviously that gets explored even more in Far From Home which, you know, they end up becoming a couple and everything but it's, like, especially just because obviously that like that sweet adorable like teen romance of them being so awkward around each other and it's just like seeing that side of her too realizing like her demeanor and everything is kind of like her like you know because she's an awkward person that was kind of like her almost like a defense mechanism it's almost kind of like oh that's that's you know it, it, it's a very different version of MJ and you know Peter's relationship it's, it's a very different dynamic that I really appreciate and what that means you know for the relationship going forward so obviously you know like I said I have, I've liked this relationship over the years, but like that's the one that I feel like, I mean, maybe because it's the most recent, you know, um, adaptation of that relationship. So that's why it's always kind of at the top of my mind, you know? So I think that's the why it's the one I'm the, this version of that relationship, that's why I'm the most invested in this particular, uh, like I said, version of it. So. And so that brings this list to an end. Um, as you may or may not know, I do basically this type of video like annually, like roughly around the time of Valentine's Day, I always uh, put out the, the list of like, you know, fictional couples I like, just because obviously it's like a very like, you know, romantic time of year, plus also, you know, just like I'm a sucker for a good love story. If you've never heard me say that before, it's a very true thing about me. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of romance stuff, so the fact of the matter is I just kind of wanted to share like some, you know, different one fictional couples that I'm like, oh, that maybe, hey, maybe you're aware of some of these, maybe you're not, so. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.